How would you describe the kind of disruption that the coronavirus has inflicted on your business? I, I thank you. Uh, first off, thank you for having me. I think it's been uh, it's been interesting for us. You know, with our footprint in Asia, we've been dealing with the coronavirus, you know, well into last year, and so uh, we've uh, you, you've seen a tremendous amount of activity. And you know, I think demonstration of the firm being agile. Uh, it's we've still focused on our strategic objectives and clearly long term objectives. So short term, you saw us work with the regulators to allow virtual sales. For the first time. So now 90% of our products in 11 markets can be sold virtually, which is a concept that, you know, was barely discussed a year ago. Uh, you saw consumers interested, as you can imagine, in health and, and life protection. 73% uh, of Chinese consumers went online during the crisis and looked for insurance. The, uh, uh, the retention rates on our insurance were 95% in Asia and grew by 10% alone, you know, without even any sales. And then in the midterm, you saw us continue to execute on Jackson, on our strategic options there, and our our now announcement that we're going to take that company into a, an IPO in the, in the first half of next year. All the work around that, the Athene investments and uh, another structure. And then long term, you saw us expand agency. Interest in joining agency is up. Banca, yeah. the relationships there. And the digital initiatives that your firm covered with uh, now 8 million users on our Pulse, Pulse ecosystem. So it's been an incredibly sure. hectic, busy time. Mike, you've got a new dividend policy that is understood to be aligned with a revised strategy. Do you, do you take from that that the worst is over or that there could still be, with fears around the second wave full blown around the world, that there could be still more pain to come into the end of the year? So for us, the, the, the change in dividend policy is in alignment with a focus more on growth. So as you, as you mentioned at the top, top of the uh, conversation, our Asia I for us operating profits are up 14%. So with, with more channels to distribute, more products now than we've ever had across the, the various household income spectrums to distribute, um, and, all, and all these new ways of doing business, we can deploy more capital than we've ever been able to organically. Uh, you, as you look at the, you know, the capital we invested, we're about 11 billion in Asia now in the last uh, 10 years. The money we invested last year, for example, in new business, every dollar in produced six dollars of earnings so what we're trying to clearly say to the market is this is strategic uh, we want to deploy as much capital as we can in asia uh, and to do that we're going to have a dividend policy that reflects that growth and of course jackson will have its own dividend policy but as as when we saw when we spun mg prudential we have to let that board meet and, and it, it, uh, define its own policies before we can state what that would be you mentioned the Jackson unit, and of course, there was a lot of speculation about the timing. You're saying first half of 2021 now, the IPO. What are you hoping to achieve out of the listing? I mean, what, what are sort of your, your longer-term goals on that front, especially given the difficulty and the volatility we are seeing in global, global markets right now? Uh, so we're not trying to, to tie markets necessarily with Jackson. And we, we say in the release clearly we'd reserve the option to use a demerger if we thought that was appropriate. But Jackson's got its own natural shareholder base, and we need to, to let them come into the shares. Uh, this all started, you know, this, this uh, pivot towards Asia with the, the, the demerger of M&G Pru and then the sale of 11.1% of Jackson to Athene, you know, again, during this COVID period. And now we're talking about an IPO in the first half of next year, which is, uh, you know, a, a pretty well-traveled path in the U.S., um, we think Jackson is an industry leader, uh, and, and it, it is on sales, it is on cost, it is on risk management. And as you can imagine, there's tremendous demand in the United States right now for retirees to have some protection on their income in retirement. Uh, to your point, the volatility of the markets, interest rates, and things, what Jackson does best, consumers need. So we think there's a real demand for the shares, and uh, you know, they're ready in size and scale to be a standalone company. Uh, give me a bit of a, a read on how you see financial markets at the moment, because uh, Bob Prince, I mean, Bloomberg spoke to him in the last few hours from Bridgewater Associates, and he laments this challenge of the traditional 60-40 equity bond split in portfolios. It's not being good enough anymore. In fact, the bond portion of it not getting you any return at all. And that uh, focuses a lot more on the equity side of that. Uh, I mean, what are, what are you seeing in terms of bigger trends in, in well, that I, story? I, you know, I, I think the, the, the macro trends in the markets now are, are disp disproportionately driven by the volatility in, in uh, policy you see globally. So, you know, the, the, uh, the, the markets to me feel like they're trading on 
on the daily news and ignoring the the historic uh, success of the companies and the you know and the clearly defined growth that companies have. And I think a lot of that just comes from you know the 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 uh, the political and you know the the macro environment has gotten so accelerated right now, so volatile with news. I mean, markets open and close faster with COVID, for example. Um, governments are getting better at at more narrowed closing and things. And and I think that if I was an investor now, the test to me would be which firms can demonstrate that they can also move quickly. I mean, I think we can we can reopen faster than we ever could, and we can we're less affected now with our virtual sales capability than we've ever been uh, during a closure. But th these are the realities of the market for a while. And, and I think the uh, the volatility there in policy creates a volatility in the operation of businesses and that, that follows through to some of the share prices. And Mike, what's your position at the moment when it comes to more mergers and acquisitions? I mean, obviously you had quite a bit of focus on the Jackson unit that took up quite a bit of resources, but what about beyond that in terms of opportunities for Prudential? Yeah, so we, you know, our organic platform is unique. Um, you know, we've been in Asia almost 100 years. Um, we clearly see just about everything that comes to market. If someone's looking at something, uh, you saw us do, uh, you know, m and with a banker relationship with uh, uh, TMB, two asset managers last year, the bank piece this year, a couple of banks in uh, in Vietnam and, and, uh, and Laos as well. So those sorts of distribution relationships we see, there's clearly some interesting things to do in the tech space, but we see the primary focus of our of organically created capital going back into organic sales. Uh, we have plenty of expanded bandwidth now to sell more than we've sold uh, historically. And as you can imagine, demand for healthcare, or, you know, which is 70% of our new business profits now in Asia uh, is up tremendously. And so we wanna make sure we're positioned in front of those consumers demands, you know, to meet that and provide the services and, and provide the returns for our investors. I mean, the folks at Bar Barclays make the point that uh, the investment case for the UK life insurance sector is rapidly moving away from comfortable dividend yields to careful individual stock consideration. Is that something that you can subscribe to? Yeah, yeah I, I, I've never been a, a sector uh, you know, fan. I, I've never seen two companies, you know, I've, I've been in the industry a little while. I've never seen two companies that are similar. I think that's one of the challenges for investors when they look at insurance companies. But you know, to be clear, we're disproportionately driven by Asia. Uh, our life business in the U.S., you know, is is at scale and unique. And I don't think there's a lot of competitors in our space that candidly have the growth we have historically, uh, or in front of them. And so I think it's very hard to say because we choose to be domiciled in the U.K. that we're a U.K. life company in a traditional sense. We have no pound exposure. Almost all of our earnings are dollar dollar linked. Uh, so, you know, we're, again, that's a, that's a, a, it's an unfair comparison for another firm that doesn't have some of those capabilities to put them side by side with us.